Hey everyone, welcome back. This week is week five of the Pandas Zero to Hero video series, a video series where I teach you simple, effective, and beginner-friendly ways of using Pandas. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jason, and in this tutorial, we're going to cover the concept of data types, as well as how to handle missing values in your data frame. The data set that we're going to use in this tutorial is the Kaggle House Prizes data set. I have included a link here on my notebook, which will bring you to the Kaggle webpage. And all you need to do is scroll down until you see uh, download all. So hit that button, uh, download the uh, file into your computer, and then import it into Jupyter Notebook. All right. So with that being said, let's get started. So first of all, we're just going to import pandas and numpy, which are the two libraries that we're going to use in this tutorial. And then what I'm going to do next is just import the dataset into our notebook, and I've assigned that to the variable called data. And these are the first five rows of our data frame. So every single row corresponds to a single house observation. And going across the columns, starting from ID all the way to the end of sale price, are the features of uh, those houses. For example, we have lot frontage, uh, lot area, street, and so on and so forth. And this very last column here called sale price is actually our target variable, uh, which means that we have all these different features about our house. Um, they will help us predict what this final sale price of those um, houses are. All right, cool. So we'll start off our tutorial by learning about data types. Uh, the function that we need to know is uh, D types. So if we apply D types to our data frame, pandas should return something that looks like this. So on the left, we have the column names starting from ID all the way down to sale price. And on the right hand side, we have the corresponding uh, data types. So for ID, um, ID is an int, um, MS subclass is also an int, MS is only an object, and so on and so forth. Alternatively, if we only want to consider a column in particular, we can use the D type function. So without an S, uh, first we need to specify the name of the column that we want to apply the function to. So for me, I want to figure out what the data type is for sale price. And this should tell me that sale price is an int 64. So what are the common data types that you'll come across in pandas? Uh, well, there's int uh, 64, so that's just an integer. We have float, floating point number, or decimal. We also have object, which is a string date, time, volume, which is true or false, and so on. We can convert a column of one type into another, uh, and the function that we need to use here is as time. Suppose I would like to convert sale price, uh, which is originally in int, to a float. Um, I first have to specify the name of the column, which is sale price, and the function that we're going to use is as type, and within the as type function, we need to uh, specify the data type that we want to convert uh, our column to. So in this case, I would like to convert it to a float. And so if I run this cell, Pandas has converted sale price into floating point number. All right, cool. So how do we locate missing values in our data frame? Uh, the way we do that is via isNull.sum. And if we run this cell, again, on the left, we have the column names. And on the right are the corresponding number of missing values in that column. So as you can see here, lot frontage has 259 missing values and zero everything else. Although it's a little bit hard to see at the moment because we have um, 81 columns, so pandas is not going to show you all the columns, at least not in Jupyter Notebook. So what I like to do instead is using the missing no matrix function that is within the missing no library. So what you need to do is first import the missing no library, and then from there we want to use the function called matrix, and we want to pass our data frame into the function. And you should get something that looks like this in return, so the output should look something like this. So if you count the columns starting from here all the way to the end, that should give you the total number of columns in our data frame, which is 81. And the white lines that you see um, in the output is actually the missing values. So say, for example, this column here has a couple of missing values. Um, this column here has almost all missing values, and so on and so forth. Sometimes it's also helpful to compute the percentage of uh, missing values out of um, our entire data frame, just to figure out how much data are we missing overall. And the way we do that is by dividing the total number of missing cells by the total number of cells in the data frame. So let's begin by looking at how we can compute for total cells. We can use the product function within the NumPy library, and within the product function, we need to pass in the shape of our data frame. So as you can see here, we have 1,460 rows and 81 columns. So what product's gonna do is it's gonna take this number and it's gonna multiply by this number. And that should give us the total cells in our data frame. As for a total number of missing cells, we need to sum up uh, data dot is now dot sum, which is essentially just summing up this output that we have on top initially. 
and that's going to give us the total number of missing cells. And we're just going to take total missing divided by total cells and then multiply by 100. That should give us the percentage of missing data. And as we can see, almost 6% of our data frame is missing. Now that we've learned how to detect the missing data in our data frame, what are some of the techniques that we can use to deal with these missing values? There are two main ways that we can use to deal with missing data. The first one is by dropping the rows or, or columns that contain the missing data entirely. Uh, the second method is by replacing the missing data with a substitute value. And that's also sometimes called imputation. There are pros and cons associated with each of the two methods. For method one, obviously, if we choose to drop rows or columns, we might lose potentially useful information, especially when we are building our model, and that will lead to inaccurate model predictions. On the other hand, if we choose to use method two, which is imputation, uh, the process actually takes more time, consideration, as well as experience. So for the rest of this tutorial, let's just go through both of these methods. So starting with method one, if we would like to drop rows or columns with missing values, uh, the function that we need to know is drop NA. So by default, drop NA is going to drop rows that contain missing values. For example, if we apply drop NA to our data frame, we can see here that um, our data frame has actually disappeared. And the reason for that is because every row in our data frame contains at least one or more missing values in one of its columns. So that's not good. Alternatively, we can drop missing values uh, across the columns. And the way we do that is within the drop any function, there's an argument called axis. And by saying that to one, that tells pandas that we want to drop uh, columns instead of rows. And so if we do that, this is our new uh, data frame that shouldn't contain any missing values. Let's now look at how many columns did we drop in the process. So we started off with 81 columns. We are now left with 62, which means that we have dropped 19 columns. That's actually quite a substantial number of columns that we're dropping from our data frame. It's almost a quarter. And so as mentioned before, one of the biggest limitations of dropping rows and columns is we run into the risk of removing important information that we will use to build our models. And 25% is a substantial number that we're dropping so essentially we're losing almost a quarter of our information. And these are the 19 columns that we have dropped from our data frame. As a rule of thumb, we only drop rows or columns if they contain significant numbers of missing data. Alternatively, if after some sort of um, analysis, we've come to conclude that some features are not important in making predictions, um, that's also a safe scenario where we can choose to drop our columns from the data frame. So now let's turn to method two, which is imputation. So what imputation is, is we're filling up missing data with some sort of substituted values. There are many different ways we can do imputation, but for the sake of keeping this tutorial short, I'm just gonna go through two of them. So the first one is by using the mean or median. This is usually applied to numerical variables. Secondly, we can also use the mode um, or zero, and this is normally applied to categorical variables. I've briefly spoken about the differences between numerical variables and categorical variables in the previous tutorial. So numerical variables are continuous. Some examples are like height, age, sales, etc. Whereas categorical variables, on the other hand, are more discrete. Some examples would be like yes or no, pass or fail, male, female, small, medium, large, etc. So let's begin by looking at numerical variables. Suppose you'd like to fill the missing data in the lot frontage column. By using D type, we can see here that lot frontage is a float which tells us that that is a numerical variable. Let's have a look at the first 10 rows of that column. So as we can see here, row with index number seven has a missing data in it. So suppose we would like to fill that missing data with the median of that column. Uh, first, let's compute the median, which is 69 in this case. And the way we impute is by passing in the median into the fill and a alert function. As we can see here, row with index number seven, which was initially a missing value, has now been imputed with uh, the value of 69, which is the median of that column. Now let's look at how we can impute a categorical variable. Suppose we would like to focus on the garage type column, and if we use the dtype function, this should tell us that garage type is an object. Now let's have a look at the value counts in that column, including null values. So on the left here should tell us the different values that exist in that column, and on the right are the corresponding frequencies of those values. And so as we can see here, attached is the most frequent one, which is our mode, um, sitting at 870. And if we look closely here, we have about 81 missing data. So suppose we would like to fill the missing data with our mode. And looking at the last 10 rows of our data frame, we can see here that row with index 1450 has missing data, 1453 has missing data. So essentially, we want to fill up these two missing data with um, our mode, which is attached. 
all we need to do is pass in the mode into the fill and a function. So as you can see, as a result, 1450 has been imputed, 1453 has also been imputed uh, with attach, which is the mode of that column. Alternatively, if we don't want to impute the missing data with any sort of statistics, we can also fill it up with any text that we desire. So suppose we would like to replace the null values in the garage quality column uh, with the word unknown. Uh, this is how we do it. So let's first look at the value counts of the garage quality uh, column. So on the left, we have the values that exist in that column, and on the right are the corresponding frequencies. And as we can see here, there are 81 missing data in the garage quality column. And now let's fill those with the word unknown. And if we run the value counts function again, we can see here that what was initially NAN has now been turned into the value unknown. As I've mentioned, there are many other techniques that you can use to impute missing data. What I've gone through in this tutorial is probably the quickest and easiest way that you can use, which is using the mean, median, and mode. But if you're interested in the more sophisticated techniques, um, I highly recommend that you check out this article that I've included here on my notebook, which will go into more detail the more advanced and complex techniques you can use uh, that will not only yield better results uh, for your imputation, but more importantly, it will help your model make more accurate predictions as a result. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you found it helpful at all, I would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video, um, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye. Thank you.